Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, once again, may I thank you very much for your patience. Uh, as indicated earlier on, we have matters that the traditional Prime Minister is to attend to. Um, I will, without any further ado, hand over to him and we will take it from the president. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to apologize for for not keeping the time which I actually suggested for our communication. But you, this anecdote might interest you that um, I found that the statement I'm going to read is in Isuzu. So, and, and I, I received it here, I didn't bring it from, from Ulundi. So, for your benefit, I, I sat down and did a free translation of it. And the problem is this, you know. I learned a, I learned a lot of things at school, from the primary school, secondary school up to the university. But one thing they failed to teach me is how to write. So my secretary had to struggle, you know, to, to try and, and type and print my, what I had to say. So I apologize for that. So whenever they laugh at me, those who know my handwriting, I always tell them that they shouldn't laugh at me because when I was doing my trip, I had the privilege of writing my uncle's letters, Dr. Sam, the founder of the ANC, and he used to sign them, and I replies, he used to get replies from them. So they can't laugh at me. Let me be serious now, ladies and gentlemen and say to you that this morning I was asked by His Royal Highness Prince Magate Zulu to read the statement on his behalf clarifying his position following public speculation that he intends contesting the throne. He has asked me to read this statement to make it clear that he has no such intention and that he gives his full support and loyalty to His Majesty King Misu Zulu, Kazultini. I trust that this puts the matter to rest. I must take this opportunity to appeal to the media to please be careful in giving credence and coverage to every voice that pontificates on matters of the royal family. It becomes misleading and is really nothing short of interference. When those outside the family pose opinions, their opinions as fact. We note, for instance, the wide speculation on social media that has been picked up by the traditional media that His Majesty the King will be compelled to marry before he can issue royal decrees. There is no basis for this claim. Indeed, the father of the nation, the father of the monarchy itself, King Shaga Kasanzangakona, was himself a celibate by choice, in that he voluntarily chose not to marry. Likewise, King Dingane was celibate by choice, yet he gave orders and declared even wars. And my maternal grandfather, King Tinizuru, actually ascended the throne before he got married. It was only the apartheid regime that misled the Amakosi, that Amakosi and kings must marry before taking over their positions. In my case, for instance, it might interest you, they sought to do everything possible to prevent me from taking my position as Inkosi of the Bichelese clan. Because I was a member of the ANC, they posed one obstacle after the next, even insisting that I get married. Despite choosing to marry my wife, Princess Irene Tandegele Mzila, in July 1952, the apartheid government still delayed and only installed me almost a year later. 
The present speculation that His Majesty will be compelled to marry before he's installed suggests that our present government wishes to mimic what the apartheid regime imposed on our people. This is an inflammatory accusation which I think can cause deep distress. I'm not saying, of course, that the king will not get married before he takes the throne. It is quite possible that he may choose to marry before he ascends the throne. But there is no reason why his not being married could stop him from ascending the throne or issuing royal decrees. He is already issuing them now as I speak. There is nothing that can be done. Uh, our royal, our royal, I mean, the, our king is already issuing many things and the king already, we can't do anything already without getting his permission or approval. I hope that this will make it very clear, ladies and gentlemen, that just how damaging it can be when the media gives space to every uninformed opinion. I don't know why you are so impatient that you don't wait for us to, to inform you. We have very loyally informed you about this whole matter. And I don't see why you should go to these so-called experts or gurus to, to, to ask them to pontificate on matters of the royal family. While matters of the royal family are of public interest, I think it is quite unfair to allow anyone and everyone to dictate what the royal family should do. When the royal family doesn't dictate to anyone what they may do in their families, I also note a report this morning in the witness stating that the Minister of Police, the Honourable Minister Peggy Kele and the former President, His Excellency Jacob Zuma, are allegedly mediating what is said to be a conflict in the royal family. The witness claims that they are doing so on instruction from, quote, the ANC top brass, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as his majesty, the king and the royal family are concerned, mediation is unnecessary in this matter. Following his majesty, the king's appointment last Friday, the Honorable Premier of KwaZulu Natal and the Honorable Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs approached me with an offer to mediate in the royal family. I advised that I would take this matter to His Majesty because I can no longer make decisions without actually referring the matter to the King. Upon consultation with His Majesty, both the King and the Queen Mother, Queen Mavis, Queen Mazumu, asked that I should thank the Premier and thank the Minister of, to, for the offer. But then at the moment, they feel quite able to sort out their own problems without seeking any outside help. I conveyed this to the Premier and His Majesty the King spoke to the Premier as well on my phone directly with both the Premier, both the Premier rather the King and also the Queen also through my phone spoke to the Premier. Perhaps having read the statement just now, I'm going to read the statement by Prince Mahagadi Zulu. It is Zulu. It will be clear now that there is no dispute at present over the throne. While Prince Mahagadi was posed in the media as a contender to the throne, he, like all of us, welcomes the reign of His Majesty King Mrs. Zulu, Gazultin. I now proceed to read his statement as he has sent to me. Mang Miguelay le gumto ano kapin dangen makeba. Bengkela uba gumto anang fundes le this statement is bulegi le ngayong uba is pali. Niya sa makeba guti kamalame sa dia chintiaga. Ekte ni minas magat ni Jackson Zulu mfuna iskunda sub course. Gichabuli le mangbona gumto ana 
umabona kuthi ezishoro ngokwakhe ukuthi angaze ngisho nakuye ukuthi niyazifuna lesikhunda nami yakufakazela lokho ngiyaqinisekisa ukuthi angaze ngisho kumuntu ukuthi niyazifuna lesikhunda ngiyezo magebe ukuthi kukhona ubuhumumu ukukhombisa ukuthi hleze kukhona abangifisela lesikhunda futhi ayikho into engayenza ngemizwa yabanye abantu mangicacise ukuthi ubabekazi wam umntwana wakando umntwana uthembi bena umntwana sekwezi umntwana umbonisi bake basiqwashisa sizingane zenkosi ukuthi uma isilo noma indunkulu iphakamisa igama lomunye wethu kufanele avume loyo oyobe ekhonjiwe ngakho ke nami kuba ngangiphakisiwe nani wesamukele leso siphakamisa futhi bake siqwayisile ukuthi uma uphakamisa omunye wethu asibomkomukela futhi simeseke lowo oyobe ekhonjiwe njengengane esonphayo nengicabanga ukuthi ijobi ngiyaqinisekisa ukuthi angeke ngiweke amagama abantu abadala njengoba bese ngichazile bese ngichazile ngezaluleko ngezaluleko ezingaphezulu ngiyamcela umntwana ukuba xa ezefunda lesitatement njengoba siyinjalo asala sengicelela eneyintatheli ukuba singalokho zingifonela ngaloludaba ngoba akukho kunye engakusho udlula lokho esengushini mangithokoza magheba imina umzukulu wakho umntwana usimakade ezulu dated on the 11th of may 2021 manje ke yoba ngishilo as i said i was delayed because i i tried to make a free translation kumshashina a free translation for the benefit of our of our media representatives who, who cannot understand the king's language <laughs> statement by his royal highness prince magadi gazolkini makeba i request the prince to read the following stating statement on my behalf as written by myself i am aware that there are talks which include my name that i smagati jackson zulu is aspiring to sit on the throne i was pleased to see that on television the prince is referring to me made it clear that i've never expressed such ambitions to him i myself wish to attest to that I wish to assure everyone that I've never expressed such ambitions to anyone. I've heard that there are talks there are people who wish me to ascend to this position and there is nothing I can do about that. I wish to stress that my aunt Princess Tembi and my uncle Prince Mbonesi warned us as the late king's children that once an announcement of, of any name amongst us is announced to be a successor to the throne that we as the children of the late king must support whoever that person is amongst us as long as that comes from the late king or the royal family so if i had been mentioned by name for that position i could have accepted the proposal by, of my name they meaning the prince mbonisi and princess tembi also warned that once such a person's name is announced we should all support and declare loyalty to such a person as someone who is respectful and humble i wish to assure everyone that i will never defy the announcement of whoever has his name mentioned as the heir to the throne I can never defy whatever my elders tell me to do. I've already mentioned the advices I've received. I request the prince referring to me should read my statement exactly as I've made it. 
I appeal to all media houses to please refrain from phoning me about this matter. I ask for this, for there is nothing I wish to add to this statement. Thank you, Makeba. I'm your grandnephew, Prince Smagate Zulu, 11th of May, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the reason why I requested you to come and I'm grateful to you that you did so because I think this statement in view of the confusion that has been started by so-called experts in the media that it's important for you to get it from me and to get it right from Prince Magadha's lips you know, and not from the experts and, or speculators in the, in the, in the media. If I don't say you please just indicate her because the light is quite powerful. Mr. Makosin? has the issue of uh, around the security of the king has uh, been resolved. The second question I've got, uh, when is the king likely to be installed? I think the issue of security being resolved, and then has the issue of security been resolved? Of His Majesty, has the issue of security been resolved? Of His Majesty, and then the second one has been resolved. What? The issue of security. Of His Majesty's security. Well, I I I find that a very interesting question. I find this a, a very interesting question and I'm glad that the general is concerned asking. This is the whole story of this saga about security. On Friday, after you know the official uh, what you call service, prayer I mean service the funeral service in the evening, Colonel Hadeb, who is deployed by the Commissioner of Police to actually lead the teams that have been rendering service to the royal family. He came with about four officers, senior officers, where I was in the palace. He then said to me that he suggested that I should propose to the king that he, he should be whisked away to Swatini immediately because of security concerns. I then told him that, in fact, that is not possible. It was in the early evening. Because in the first place, I have, the king has an appointment with me the following day because he told me through the phone that he has a message to me from His Majesty King Swati. And therefore, that meeting has to take place. The canon suggested that, well, soon after, soon after that, what you call the appointment, he should then be whisked to Swati, Swati, Swati. And I was startled because how can someone be put on the throne and then be ordered for security reasons to, go, to be whisked to Swati, to, to Swati, I'm sorry, I apologize to Swati, to the king, to Swati. I said, how, how can that be? And I said, is, is the suggestion that the kingdom of Swati has better security than, than the security of the Republic? In fact, then the Queen Mother, Queen Mavis, Mazum, then entered the discussion and said, Madabam, my children, why don't you touch in the article? Because they were suggesting that the, the, the appointment should be in Kopindanga in my residence, uh, you know, rather than at the palace. And I said, but I, the, I cannot do that. The king, you know, this is the palace of the king, and, and I have to be here at, at the palace to hear what the king's message from the other king of the kingdom of Swatiland, of the Swatini, says. 
I was surprised then because then as I, as I drove to the palace I received a phone call from his on, the Honourable Mr. Sita Zigalala, our Premier, who said to me, he, together with the Minister of Kokta, the Honourable Dr. Kosasana Lamini Zuma, would like to intervene in what they see as a conflict in the family. I've said this already in my statement. And I said, of course, I, 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 I no longer decide anything without the king and I'll convey this to the king. I then conveyed it to the king, who then said that he didn't think that there was any matter that they, could, they couldn't sort out his royal family, and was very grateful for the proposed intervention, but he, they think that they were able to do so. Then also, the queen mother, Queen Mavis, my room, also entered the discussion and said that, you no, know, for the moment, they don't think that there should be any, what you call, intervention from outside because they think the royal family is quite capable of sorting out its different, I mean, its conflicts, if there are any conflicts. So I was surprised then when the premier then issued a statement to to say that in fact I should have checked with them. Look, ladies and gentlemen, the person who actually informed me that the security was being withdrawn was Advocate Mshololo, who is actually an advocate of the High Court, who is residing at the, at the palace of the king. He, he told me, he, to, because he, he, he couldn't tell anyone, he, he had to come to me to say, now the, the security of the king is being withdrawn. You know. So, in fact, some of the journalists actually said that they were all willing to give me some footage of when some of the policemen were, were leaving that night. So I I'm really find it surprising in the extreme that the ANC in this province should then chip in and accuse me of having a political program. I have no political program in the royal family. I'm part of the royal family in the first place, quite apart from my position as, as traditional prime minister of the king. And I, and I actually, my, the, 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 the political support that I've received in this country, it, it was political support which I, which I got on my own initiative. It has never been actually because of, of royalty or because of the late king or anyone. It was support to me as Mangosu Tupuchilis. And that is why, in fact, they, uh, they, they've always tried to build a narrative that um, I was using the king. I don't, I don't need, need to use the king. I don't need to use the king. In this province itself, twice for 10 years, my, my party was in charge of the province. And then I got you no know, support. I mean, a clear majority twice. It was not because of the king. And it's nonsensical in the extreme. And I'm very distressed actually by the statement by the ANC in this province. Because they're the ones always, who have always scuppered all our efforts at reconciliation. All the time. We are taking back to the time when Mr. Mandela, they prevented Mr. Mandela from seeing me. They said he can't see me. When Mr. Harry Kuala took a busload of the leaders of ANC in Natal and to, jo to Johannesburg, to Shell House. When Mr. Mandela had agreed to go with me to Taylor's Hall to address a joint rally of the ANC and, 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 and IFP members. They, they went in a bus to tell him not to go there, you know. And I, I could not miss my friend, Mr. Mandela, who was released in February. In fact, through my pleas and through my, 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 my campaign for him is released. I couldn't see him until the 29th of July, the following year, because of them. And when the time expired for me 
to be in the government of national unity in 1999 because I was in the government through the interim, interim uh, constitution which prescribed that any party that had more than 5% of the votes should have ministers in the government. It was for this reason that Umatiba, our president, asked me to select ministers and we should declare to select ministers because we are the two parties that had more members. It was not by, actually, by, by, even by his grace, although he was very happy that I did so. But then when the, this thing had expired, the incoming president, who was incoming president now, His, His Excellency Tabo Mbuyelompegi, invited me to Tambo House and he said to me, Sherman, I think that although the final constitution doesn't prescribe that we can continue the government of national unity, I'm asking you to agree to, for us to work together for the sake of reconciliation. I consulted the IFP and they agreed. So after the election, Mr. Mpegi actually invited me to Tambo House again. He then said to me, he was appointing me as the deputy president of the Republic. But he then said, but there's one thing I want to say this morning. You see those seats, he was pointing at the seats, you know, in the lounge. He said, leaders of the ANC in the province of KwaZulu Natal, of KwaZulu Natal, KwaZulu Natal, yes, were sitting here. And they said to me, if you are appointing Telezi as deputy president, then the, the premiership of the IFP in KwaZulu, KwaZulu Natal, which was held by Dr. Mchali, he must, must, he must give it to the ANC. Of course, I couldn't do that to take the votes of the people of this province in a platter and, and give them to an, another party. But Mr. Mpegi, pursuing reconciliation, he still said to me, well, even if you are not taking the position on, the, on that condition then, but we must still work together in pursuance of reconciliation. I said, well, it's up to you then, Mzizi, to, to tell me what, what position. He said, no, 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 I want you to continue to be Minister of Home Affairs. Then I continued to be Minister of the, of the Home Affairs after that. And I can mention even now, even now, I've had a discussion with the President two years ago at King's House or Dube House now in Durban for about three hours or more seeking reconciliation because I, I'm aware that I'm living by God's grace now. At my age, each day is by God's grace. And I, I can go anytime. And I said that I would like, when I close my eyes, to close the wound between us and, and the ANC. But even then, the delay comes from this province. Because what has happened is that the ANC in this province have decided to name Abakulu's area Mzala Umalu region and it's deliberate because the ANC have a book which was written by their researcher nobleman Umalo, Jablan Umalo, who used a nom de plume and signed himself Mzala where he defamed me, he defamed my family he said all sorts of things about me. And even now that propaganda is, is actually being propagated. And I was shocked when I saw one minister, Minister Dr. Zimande, on, on Morning Alive, paging this book saying that it must be printed. And also our former president, Mr. Zuma, saying this book must be printed. So even now, questioning that I I'm not a Prime Minister, comes from that book, which is the Bible of the ANC, questioning my ancestry by saying that I'm not, a, I'm not actually a prince, comes from that book. And yet, in that book, there's such nonsense as to say 
Dr. Seme was the son of a princess, which is utter nonsense. Dr. Seme was married to the eldest daughter of King Dinizu. Dr. Seme's children are princes and princesses like myself and my, my sisters and brothers. But all the people that, that are poisoned with this, this thing, you know, even now they are writing in the newspapers because, you know, there is this holy, holy read by the ANC. And it's the ANC here says that they cannot be dictated to by the national leadership. Because I said to, to the president that our cooperation with them in Johannesburg City cannot continue if they, they, they don't put that right. Because they are trying to lionize this person. Just as they did here in Mulazi. Here in Mulazi, the, the Mangosul Highway was obliterated by the ANC. They removed my name and, and called him Mutlanga Highway. You know? What was it? That was done not by me or by my influence. It was done by the, the, the council of Mulazi at that time. Acknowledging what I had done in Umlazi. Most of the houses at Umlazi were done by me. Most of the houses there. Many things that I did there. I mean, for instance, the Prince Micheli Hospital in Umlazi was built by myself. And the Mangosut University was not built with government money. It was built by me with money from my friends. So in acknowledgement of that, they decided then to name the ro road Mangosut Highway. But even now, they pretend that they've changed that, but actually, in point of fact, they've not done so. So I'm not surprised by the statement that, that they make now, because I don't know how the ANC enters into, into this thing to say that, uh, you know, I must check my facts. Because I, I'm not a, a, a maroon or, or an idiot. I was not born yesterday, too. And I think some of you uh, they've known me for quite some time. I'm not an S. I'm told that I'm told that the second question is when is the king going to be installed? But actually, I, 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 I mentioned this at a press conference, and some of the media houses were present. I said the king has got his belongings when he came down for the burial of his mother. And I said that he's going to go back, he's going to go back to Switzerland to collect his thing for a time which is not more than a week, I said, and he'll come back. Prince Tulani has prepared the minutes because the Premier phoned me asking me for the minutes of that meeting, you know, which took place on Friday. I said that, in fact, I'm sure Anchor or SABC or Newsroom can, can give me some footage which I can give him as far as what happened on Friday night. But however, since he wants those minutes, Prince Tulani, the King's uh, personal assistant, has prepared those ground and so I'm just waiting to sign them and deliver them to the Premier. That is the process, that's where the process is at present. But on our part as Zulu people, well, he's already on the throne as far as we are concerned. He's already our king, you know, as far as we are concerned. And this is not without precedence. You know what? My maternal grandfather, King Tunisuru, was exiled after the Pombada Rebellion was exiled to a cake farm in, in Middleburg, in what was then Transvaal. And he died in, in October 1918. And when his body was brought to Kwanobamba by wagon, he was buried there. You see, when my grandfather went to St. Helena, when he was ex exiled, he went there with two of his wives. Uh, a girl from Jalose, Slomo. Slomo Ogantuzo was the mother of King Solomon, Prince Msheni, and Princess Makoko. In fact, my two uncles were born on the island, but my mother was born after return. And then the other wife, Zishazile Makwazo, 
who was the second wife, also had two sons, Prince David Nyawana and, and Princess Samuel Begindota. Begindota. Now, as soon as the king was buried at, at Nobamba, the principal donor of the king, Mankulumane and the people, they saluted David because they thought he, he was older than King Solomon. They, they, they gave him this Baete salute, but he sal salute. But my uncle King Solomon then, from his jacket, he had sewn a, a letter that his father, King Dinzulu, had actually sent to him, naming him. So he produced it there at the grave. And Prince David said, this is my father's handwriting. I can't, I can't dispute it. And there and then at the grave, I mean, he was given the Bayate salute. Because from the point of view, it was not the colonial government that was going to make him king, but the, the Zulu people in the royal family. I mean, these formalities come out of conquest and that our brothers and sisters who are sitting now in government are going through those motions now of preparing to appoint the king. But as far as we are concerned, the king is already on the throne. I think I've answered that question now. No, we're going to meet on Friday, as far as those issues are concerned. Because Tokozani has no right whatsoever to, to do what he did. Because, I, in fact, I was seeing him for the first time myself, I didn't know him. And I was told he's the former speaker in Ilembe, where his surname was Msweli. And I was told that he was a, a son of my cousin, Prince Penuerga Solomon Gatinizul. But he's known as, as Msweli, he was a member of the African National Congress and a speaker in the Ilembe municipality. So you can see that he, has no, he had no status that he should interrupt, you know, what was the meeting of the royal family on such a serious matter. He had no right. He, he hasn't got any precedence to other senior members of the royal family who were present. Uh, Yeah, that, that issue about the king should get married. 
you don't shoot at me with that, he says now that since he's got him, it's thankful, he's thankful that he's got him the explanation oh, of yeah. the issues. And then the second question is, when can the coronation be anticipated to be? When coronation is what? Can, will take place. And but I thought I've answered this question just now. Haven't I answered that question? I've answered that question already. I've said that the king will be going to Swaziland after the meeting we're having on Friday. And I said that he'll be away for not more than a week, I said. And I said that today I'm going to sign the minutes which are going to be sent to, to, to what you call to, to, to the premier of the province. I've already explained that that, of course, is in position since our conquest. Because as far as the Zulu nation is concerned, the king is on the throne. But I've said this, I don't understand what I must clarify. Me. Because we have to wait for that process on the side of the, of the, of the, of the government. Mr. Tuma? Actually, what? Married. I don't, I'm not sure. You can inform me when he got married. But, but for me, I don't know that he's married. I'm, I'm not informed, I'm told that the lawyer representing the royal family has sent a thing on WhatsApp about that matter, so I would rather not comment about it. has raised concerns about the Swazi police uh, being here saying it's a waste of taxpayers' money for the people of Swaziland and then asking whether we will still continue with the traditional Prime Minister. Who will continue? You and the First of all, concerning that matter, you know, I don't think that he would, I would do what the song says. Fools rushing where angels fear to thread. <laughs> and I will, I will not rush into that matter of Switzerland. But I don't know why at this time when we are mourning the death of the king, when things are, are not completed, you keep on asking me about 
this raising this issue with some of these uh, gurus, you know, because it doesn't depend on me. It depends. It depends on the king, and it depends. And at my age, I expect that the, the king will, in good time, appoint his own uh, prime minister. But the late queen had already said that I, would, I was going to continue to chair the, the what you call the royal council that advises her. But I, but I don't know why this anxiety about saying when am I going to what do you call it? I didn't choose myself. My cousin King Cyprian Begusulu, young Azizu, appointed me to that position. The late king did not appoint me, but he used me in that same position. You know? And I was quite angered when one journalist, you know, Begisisa um, what do you call uh, Nobel in the in the witness wrote an article to say that they used to have discussions with the king in in, in the hotels where he said that he need, didn't appoint me. In fact, it's true he didn't appoint me. And all the time I said to him, he must appoint his own prime minister, and he didn't do that. And I carried all the way the, the work. I mean the duties of, of the Prime Minister, all his instructions. I don't know why you should worry about, about it to say when am I going to a medical, as if I appoint myself. And in any case, at this stage, I'm 92 years now, I have no reason to want to continue because I've even relinquished my position as leader, leading my party. Even in Parliament, I'm just waiting for the passing of the law on appropriation uh, without without compensation. Otherwise, I, I, I should have retired by now. And I don't know why a, a man of 92 years should be asked whether he wants to continue to be <laughs> a radical. I don't know why anyone with anything between his ears should keep on asking him. Thank you very much uh, for your attendance and the visitors here to us are cool uh, for everything uh, and I appreciate your presence. Colleagues, I think we are done. Anyways, thank you very much. Have a safe journey home and all of the uh, for the final and then you just see you again.